Neptune, the planet named after the Roman god of the sea, is the farthest planet from the sun with a mean orbital radius of 4.5 billion kilometers. That is 30 times the Earth's sun distance. In fact, it's so far from Earth, it was not discovered till 1846, more than 200 years after the invention of telescope. Neptune is the only planet in the solar system whose existence was mathematically predicted before observation. This is the story of Neptune and the tale of the fortuitous events leading to its discovery. The credit of the discovery of Neptune goes to two 19th century astronomers, Frenchman Urbain Le Verrier and Englishman John Adams. Discovery of the first celestial body through telescope is credited to Galileo, who had observed the four moons of Jupiter in 1610. Few years later, Huygens discovered the largest moon of Saturn, Titan. After that, there was a long lull of about 130 years when no new significant celestial body was discovered. It all changed in 1781 when German astronomer William Herschel discovered Uranus. That discovery opened the floodgates and a bunch of new moons and asteroid belt objects were discovered soon after. By this point in time, astronomers had observed the orbits of the known planets in great detail. While the orbits of Mars, Jupiter, Saturn followed the path predicted by Sir Isaac Newton's law of gravitation to the finest detail, there was a problem with Uranus. Sometimes it would move ahead of its predicted location. At other times, it would fall back. On the screen, you see the measured angular deviations in the orbit of Uranus. The greater the deviation from the zero line, the larger the error. These observations were made over 150 years with the earliest observations dating back to the early 18th century. Such discrepancies had bothered the astronomers of the days deeply. Astronomy was supposed to be the science of precision. Such violations were sacrilege. Some argued that perhaps the measurements carried out in the 1700s were not as accurate. Others said that perhaps Newton's law do not hold as good so far away from the sun. But Verrier was not among those. He was a firm believer in the sanctity of the gravitational laws. He believed that these deviations are due to attraction of yet another undiscovered planet orbiting at an even greater distance. There were many unknowns involving prediction of such a celestial body. The size of the orbit was unknown, whether the orbit will be circular or elliptic was guesswork as well. Verrier estimated these parameters and calculated an orbit for the new planet so that the deviations in the Uranus' orbit could be explained. He published his findings in a series of three papers from November 1845 to September 1846, describing the possibility of a new planet. Here, we should also note the contribution of Adams. He had carried out similar calculations at least one year prior to Verrier. He tried to meet Sir George Airy, the director of the Royal Greenwich Observatory, on multiple occasions to discuss his results. However, his plea fell on deaf ears. On the other hand, just 20 days after the presentation of his final paper, Verrier sent a letter to German astronomer Johann Goll in the Berlin Observatory, asking him to observe a specific region in the night sky in search of the planet. On the night of the September 23rd, 1846, Goll, along with a young assistant, Heinrich Darest, embarked on the quest to find a new planet. They would look for stars near the predicted location and check whether that celestial body is documented in the existing star maps. Very soon, the duo gazed on a suspicious object within one degree of the predicted location, which was not listed in the star maps. Darest famously shouted out, that star is not on the map, upon hitting the jackpot. To ensure the new object is not an undiscovered star, the duo looked for movement of the object by continuing their observation the following night. 
stars being much farther away compared to the planets move slowly in the night sky if the newly discovered body is a planet its position would change against the backdrop of the stars and it did move the discovery of neptune was a watershed moment in the history of astronomy for the first time in human history the existence of a celestial body was predicted through tools of modern science the tyranny of planetary alignment no longer dictated the human condition rather the clockwork of celestial mechanics is governed by tools of modern science verrier was the person who had discovered the planet with the point of his pen but wait this story of triumph and discovery comes with a huge caveat the discovery of neptune also depended greatly on serendipity and sheer luck the orbits predicted by verrier and adams looked something like this here the field circles denote the predicted locations on 1800 1810 1820 and so on whereas the true orbit of neptune looks like this notice how much smaller the true orbit is in comparison to the predicted ones both verrier and adams used something known as the tts board law to predict the orbital radius the law was the result of a curious observation the distances of the known planets from the sun when expressed in astronomical units follow a power law relation as shown on the screen however the law turned into a mainstream tool for conducting research only when the planet uranus and the asteroid belt object ceres were found exactly at the locations predicted by the tts board law but the law failed miserably for neptune the law predicted an orbital radius of 38 au whereas the true orbit of neptune is much smaller 30 au why did it fail it failed because after all it was just that a strange coincidence however notice how close the true orbit comes to the predicted orbit in the year of the discovery 1846 it's within the zone of accuracy so to say if instead of 1846 verrier had published his work in 1800 or in 1900 in all probability the search wouldn't have ended well we see even though at the outset we would like to believe that the path of scientific discovery is rooted in dispassionate logic where coincidences have very little role to play as we delve deeper we find out it's quite the contrary much like other avenues of human endeavor science is also a very human topic where sheer luck sometimes works its magic